Oh, no. Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today I've got a pretty interesting topic for you guys, and that is the difference between an achromatic refractor and an APO. So for those of you guys not familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com, and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, just in general, a little bit about me, kind of my credentials of why I think, you know, I've got a say in this topic. I'm, I've owned over, well over a hundred telescopes at this point. Probably have owned, I don't know, roughly like 10 acromats and then probably at least 20 APOs, probably more like 30. So, um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, the theory and the like you know I guess the terminology behind this topic but really I just want to give you guys my real world experience of you know what the differences are between the scopes because I think that's you know way more important than you know because you could look up the theory on Wikipedia right all right so just to start out the way that in general a refractor works is that there's a lens up in the front here and then basically what it does is it converges all the light that's coming into the telescope to a single point which is called a focal point you know in the back somewhere out here so you know really simple this is you know about as simple as it gets for an optical design you know generally speaking not too much going on you know there's no diagonal in here you know in its default configuration or anything like that there's no mirrors no nothing there's just the lens that converges the light here now where it gets a little bit tricky for those of you guys that took physics, uh, if you remember at all, is that light uh, actually gets bent in different ways by different you know mediums that it passes through. So what does that mean? Well, they use glass for most lenses, you know, some kind of a glass, you know, and you know the, there's other types of things that they use like crystals, which you know for is one of them. Um, for higher end scopes, but anyhow, so it'll, it'll bend light in different ways. Now, what typically happens with regular glasses, it'll bend the light in such a way that all three colors will not come to focus at the same focal point. So that's where you get uh, you know, with an acromat with an achromatic refractor. That's where you get that what's called secondary color or chromatic aberration is what it's technically called. So what is that? I'm going to post the picture right now. Um, as you can see in the picture, you see that purple halo around the star. So the star is the thin in the middle, the bright, you know, like white thin. So that's the star. The halo around it, that is the chromatic aberration. So that's the secondary color that's not coming to focus, you know, around the star. Uh, you can also see that with an achromatic refractor around planets and the moon um, and pretty much any bright object, like if you're doing terrestrial observing, you'll see it like, you know, like let's say if there's like a lamppost, you know, and there's you know, a background behind it, like you'll see like a purple, you know, halo glow if the lamppost looks like white or like a bright, you know, silver or something like that. So now you might ask, you know, why is that bad? Like, should I really care about that? Well, I mean, people do have different sensitivities to the secondary color, chromatic aberration is what it's called. Um, typically what it does is, you know, um, it'll actually make the contrast of the entire image lower in an achromatic refractor versus an APO. Why is that? Well, I mean, if you think about it, like, so though it's, it's not that there's just light that doesn't come to focus around that bright star. It's just light everywhere in the image, like if you're looking at a nebula or whatever, or like the moon. The whole image is not quite in perfect focus, essentially, is what happens. So your contrast is going to be lower. You do actually lose a little bit of uh, essential light gathering ability, too. So if you're looking at deep sky objects, it's going to be a little bit brighter in an APO versus an achromatic refractor. Okay, so now that I've kind of covered in general how a refractor works and how an achroma works and, you know, how it does not kind of, you know, get all the colors in focus, uh, what is an APO? An, an APO stands for an achromatic refractor. Um, and basically, you know, loosely defined that's a telescope that's a refractor that can focus all of those three colors, you know, to a single point. Now, the term APO is loosely used by the industry, so there's anything, you know, from like really entry level, like ED scopes that are called an APO, to really high end triplets like the astrophysics here. Um, so there isn't like, you know, like a well-defined, you know, term for it. 
But essentially what it does is it uses a more exotic glass, um, which is usually uh, called ED glass or fluoride glass, to basically help the scope bring um, all three colors into focus uh, at that single point. Alright, so now that we kind of have all the general theory out of the way and, you know, the general terminology, again, if you're kind of more into the theory of this, this isn't really what this video is, you know, meant to do. Go look it up on Wikipedia or some other smart uh, person. Um, what I wanted to talk more about is, you know, real world experience. I mean, again, I've used uh, these scopes for years and years. I've compared them side by side. So, you know, I've got a you know, pretty good experience with this. I'm not just like trying to regurgitate to you guys what I read on the internet forums, although I do read those a lot. Uh, some of the posts are pretty funny there when people don't know what the heck they're talking about, which kind of makes it even funner to read them, right? <laughs> but anyhow, um, so I'm going to run through uh, visual first and then I'll, you know, kind of touch on imaging, um, you know, as to what you should expect and if it's worth it for your use case to upgrade from an achromatic refractor to an APO refractor. So visually starting out, um, you know, there's a, a number of, uh, of the shorter tube, you know, rich field uh, achromatic refractors these days. Which is primarily what sold like they don't really sell like the really long focal length ones anymore real much. Um, you know, kind of unfortunately, but it's understandable just because you know there there's pretty cheap APOs out there these days. But anyhow, so those shorter focal length scopes, like if you're looking for a scope, you know, just to sweep the Milky Way, your primary interest is getting those really wide field of views. You know, you, you want to use like let's say a two inch. 30 millimeter, uh, 82 degree eyepiece, or you know something around that, and your primary interest is you know just doing sweeping up the Milky Way with the scope. You know those scopes are absolutely perfectly fine with that. I mean, an APO typically they will have a little bit better focuser, although you can always upgrade the focuser. Um, but let's say if I have this Astrophysics 130 GT, right, and then I've got you know like. Um, um, an Orion, I think they make like a 120 short tube, um, you know, like set up side by side, and I'm using those really like hyper low power uh, field of views. You know, am I really going to see the difference between these scopes? You know, if I, if I really like scrutinize the image, you know, for like an hour or something like that, I'd probably be able to, you know, like tweak out a little bit more detail out of the scope. But really, you know, like the average person, if they come and look through that, you know, like several hundred dollar short tube, Orion, versus this, you know, thousand and thousand dollar, you know, like premium APO, are they really going to see the difference? You know, probably not. So for that type of use scenario, you know, those short tube, you know, scopes are absolutely perfectly fine and I'd highly recommend them, you know, especially if your budget is limited. You know, this is kind of an extreme example, but even if you're comparing, you know, like a scope that's, you know, like four or five hundred bucks, to like one that's a thousand bucks. I mean, even even in that type of you know scenario, you still might be better off with the acromat. You know, if, if all you're using the forest for those low you know field of views. All right. So next up, you know, we'll we'll kind of jump into what I consider to be probably like the most common use scenario for a refractor, which is like a general type of scope, maybe like a quick grab and go type of scope that you're using. Uh, so if you want a refractor, let's say that's, you know, four inch, like around that is a really popular size. Uh, and more broadly, we'll say from 80 millimeters to 130 millimeters, so from like three and a half inches to uh, five inches. So if you're looking for a scope in that size and, you know, you want a refractor for their versatility because, they, you know, they cool down fast. Um, you know, they provide really awesome, you know, pinpoint views. So if you're looking for a scope in that, that's kind of a general type of use scope. Uh, you know, I would have a very, 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 very hard time recommending an achromatic refractor. To get one that's sufficiently color corrected enough to, will, to where it will not show you secondary color on the moon and the planets, it'd have to be a really long focal length. So we're talking about F10 or longer. Um, I mean, the thing that would be, you know, like it'd be a long scope, right, even in a four inch. And they don't really make too many of them. Like Celestron made the GT model of this, I think the F9.8. I tested it a number of years. I'll actually have the link in the description. You know, it actually provides a pretty cool image. I mean, for a $100 scope, it actually wasn't bad. Um, the thing is, uh, once you start using these guys and you kind of get spoiled by the APO view, and I'm not, I'm not even talking about ones that are this high end. I'm talking about ones, 
I mean, these things, these days, I think Astrotech makes a four-inch uh, ED doublet APO. That's like I think like six or seven hundred bucks. I mean, that's just so much performance for your money. That you know, like realistically, if you're using for if you're looking for a general use refractor, I would have a very hard time um, recommending like an Acromat. I'd really just save up the, you know, like, even though it's, it's, it's a lot more expensive than that crown, but I'd still save up and get the APO because you're going to get those nice crispies to where they're essentially color free. Um, you're just going to get higher contrast. Uh, so, yeah, I think for that type of, you know, general use type of scenario, an APO is definitely, definitely worth it. Alright, so now if you're looking for more of like a super dedicated planetary telescope, um, I think that's where um, you might benefit even f from going to like a triplet APO versus an ED doublet. Um, and I certainly wouldn't really recommend an achromatic refractor. I mean, unless again you find like one of those uh, old school F15s or something like that. But anything that's available today on the market, yeah, I mean, you're, you're really, you know, kind of limited by your choice because, you know, APOs are so prevalent. So yeah, so if you're, you know, if you live in an area, I guess let, let me kind of um, kind of zone, zone, zoom in on that a little bit more on that video. So if you live in an area that has really good, say, let's say if you're going to be using the magnifications of like 200x and more. What I'd actually be looking at is probably a triple A refractor versus a doublet. Because at those really high powers, you are actually, with the DD doublet, you're still going to see some secondary color. Now, it depends on how sensitive your eyes are to secondary color. Like, my eyes are really sensitive to secondary color. I could actually see secondary color in a lot of premium scopes, you know, once those higher, you know, powers start to go up. I mean, I've had a Tech 140 to where, you know, if I'm using anything above 200 outs, I could still see secondary color with it. Uh, like the astrophysics here, um, I like you know I could kind of tease it out on the brightest stars, and I mean this is about as premium of an APO as it gets. Again, my eyes are really sensitive to blue though, so your my your eyes might not be. It also depends on your experience level. I mean, if you don't really know what to look for, chances are you're not going to see it. But um, if you're really into that planetary thing, I would actually get an APO and maybe get one that's a longer focal length too, so like an F7 or higher, you know, that'll also help out. Like this is an F6.3, even though it's really highly corrected. Not really made for the plants, I mean, this is made more for astrophotography, you know. So if your planetary is your thing, I'd get an ED doublet that's really long, like let's say, like, you know, hopefully like an F8 or longer or a triplet that's F7 or longer because that will, you know, the, the longer the focal ratio, the better the color correction is going to be on any scope actually, including acromats. All right, so getting into imaging. Um, if you're imaging, you know, you really shouldn't consider an acromatic refractor. I mean, unless you already have one, you want to, you know, give it a whirl, perfectly fine. Um, the thing is, the new CMOS cameras, they're hyper, hyper sensitive to that blue light, so you'll see a huge purple halo. I'm going to post a picture of, an, you know, like uh, some images that I've taken through in that chromat. I mean, you know, there's some post-processing that you could do to kind of, you know, help to um, alleviate that issue. But really, an ED doublet is the absolute minimum for imaging. Um, Although, realistically, if you're kind of really serious into it, like if you're doing EAA, you know, the ED doublet is perfectly fine, but if you want, like, you know, those pretty picture astrophotography type of images, you really ought to, you know, just save up and get a triple refractor because the camera, it'll really see that secondary color and stars that are actually, you know, fairly, fairly dim, actually. So I'm going to post another image right now. This was actually taken with the uh, William Optics 110. Uh, with the tech lens that I had a few years ago. It's actually a pretty premium scope. I, you know, the lens is really good quality on that, but it was kind of, you know, it was made, you know, kind of a few years ago. So even though it's a triplet with, I think, an ED element, as you can see, there's still some purple around the stars there. So if you buy a scope that is not really well corrected for chromatic aberration for astrophotography, uh, you are going to have to deal with that and you know it's just kind of extra processing work and you're just never going to get as crisp of images as with the true APO simply because again all that light it just does not come to focus at the same point so you're you know your image is just not really ever going to be quite as sharp. 
All right, to kind of sum it up and bring the ship home, is an APO worth it over, you know, over an achromatic refractor? You know, I'd say with the exception of that first case scenario that I have that you just want, let's say you have a big dog and you just want like a wide field sweeper, don't want to spend a lot of money on it. Uh, with the exception of that scenario, I would highly, highly, highly recommend at least an ED doublet. I mean, the image is much crisper on those scopes. It's going to be shorter. They're just, you know, pure joy to use. Like, the focuser is already better on them out of the box. So these days, you know, I mean, unless you're just really on a limited budget, in which case maybe a, a refractor isn't the scope for you anyway. Maybe like a little daub, like a tabletop daub is a better option for you anyhow. Um, I, you know, I really would highly recommend going with uh, with an APO. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not recommending like this one necessarily. I'm just saying like an APO in general. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, hopefully you guys found this topic interesting. If you guys have any comments, questions, like if you have, you know, questions about specific models, you know, chances are I've probably used that model or maybe something similar, you know, feel free to, you know, leave a question in the thing below. If you have a general comment, suggestion, you know, leave it in the thing below. I always listen to all your guys' feedback, and I do appreciate it. Again, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.